Hello there, it's Mike with the Fish Tank Barn. I'd like to welcome you back to another video. Over the past few months, there have been quite a few fish that have come into the fish barn, and there's been some pretty exciting things that have happened. So I want to take you around the barn today and give you some pretty cool updates on some pretty exciting things that have happened here in the barn. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's first talk about the Xenotoka Dodroy. I first purchased these pair back in October at the Southwest Michigan Aquarium Society auction. These were a replacement for a colony that I unfortunately lost due to disease. And as you can tell, they've really done quite well for me, as now you can see quite a few fry. This was probably one of the largest Gadea spawns that I've ever had here in the fish barn, so it's something I'm pretty proud of. I'm really excited to see this colony grow and develop, and hopefully at some point, we can start getting some of these fish out to some of my other fellow fish keepers. This next group of fish I wanna show you are my group of golden teddies, or Xenophallus umbratilis. I had originally purchased a pair of these fish at our local club auction at the beginning of November. At our club meeting about a week later, there happened to be someone selling more of these, so I was able to pick up another couple of pairs. I always like having multiple pairs of live bears, so I was really happy to be able to pick up some more fish. And shortly after that, I found a fair number of fry in this tank. This is a fish that I haven't bred before, so I'm pretty excited to have some fry breeding in the fish room, and hopefully at some point, I'll be able to submit these for the BAP program at my local club. This next 29 gallon tank is home to two different species that I purchased from Dan's Fish. The yellows fish are my Xiphophorus milleri, which I've had for over a year, and I've been breeding quite readily since I purchased them. The grayish color fish are my Pocilia geely, which is a molly species that I purchased back in July. Over the past couple of months, the Pocilia geely have really taken off and have really produced quite a few fry. I was even able to submit these for BAP points at my local club last month, which is something I'm extremely proud of. This colony has even gotten to the point where I can probably move some of the fry on to some of my other fellow fish keepers. This next update comes as a little bit of a surprise, but let's talk about the tiger teddies that we covered a couple of weeks ago. I was looking at the bottom of the tank the other day, and I happened upon this little guy swimming around the bottom. As we talked about a couple of weeks ago, these guys are super fetacious, which means they'll drop a few fry every single week. I'll have to keep my eye on this tank and see if we can spot more fry over the coming weeks. Like the golden teddies we talked about earlier, this is another fish that I haven't bred before, so hopefully we can get enough fish to submit them to the BAP program, and maybe at some point, even be able to get them out to some of my fellow fish keepers. This next update is not necessarily a good one, and that's the update on the angelfish eggs. Unfortunately, the day after I found them, all of the eggs were gone. There are a ton of snails in this tank, and I'm pretty sure the snails ate all of the eggs once all the lights went off. I've been working to remove all of the snails, and as we can see, I have a little bit more work to do. I haven't seen any cleaning or spawning behavior from the angelfish, but hopefully we'll have some more eggs here in the near future. If we get some more eggs, I'll have to figure out whether to keep them in the tank or move the eggs to a separate rearing tank. I'll definitely keep you updated on this pair as things happen in the near future. Over the past couple of months, I've been doing a bit of an experiment with dither fish with some of my Shire Liberia species, and I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on the progress. While this isn't the prettiest tank, the Red Moscow Guppies and Xiphophorus andersi have been doing quite well together. The addition of the guppies has really helped with the shyness of the andersi, and they've been out quite a bit more. I also did this experiment with my Xiphophorus nezichiotl tank with some panda guppies that have seen a similar result. The nezi swords were even shyer than the andersi, and they've been out quite a bit more since the addition of the guppies. I definitely feel so far that this project has been a success, and one thing I'd like to see next is hopefully see some fry from both the nezis and the andersi here in the near future. A couple weeks ago, I made the trip to a local swap in my area and found some more of these Calico Sanke Swordtails to add to the fish that I purchased a few months prior. I ended up buying six more fish, so I decided to relocate them from their current 20 gallon tank into this open 29 gallon tank, which I think is a better setup for them. You also notice some silverfish running around in this tank, and those are some Pseudomagil Gertrude from Arrow 2 that I picked up at the same local fish club meeting where I purchased the Golden Teddies. You can definitely see I need to do some planning and aquascaping work in this tank, but I hope to get that done here in the near future.
Speaking of the swap and the 20 gallon tank that housed the sore tails, it didn't take me long to find another fish to go into that tank. At the swap, I was able to find this pair of saddleback platies that I thought were kind of cool. I really thought they had a unique look to them with their white color and orange backs. We'll see if we can get some fry out of this pair here in the near future. If you've watched this channel for a while, you know that I'd like to buy additional fish to add to my existing colonies. At the swap, I was able to find some more of these Bracky Raffis Russ with they, and was able to pick up a couple more pairs. I now have eight fish in total, which is a number that I'm pretty happy with. I recently did try to pull one of the females to see if she would drop some fry, but unfortunately that wasn't successful. I do believe that she dropped some fry, but unfortunately I think she was able to get to them and eat them. I'll keep trying with this group, and hopefully we'll be able to have some fry here in the near future. It's been a while since we've spoken about my 245 gallon South American Cichlid tank, but I do want to talk about our new addition to this tank as well. I was able to find a couple of pink tailed Chelsea's to add to this tank and provide some movement. I've always wanted to add some more schooling fish to this tank, and the pink tailed Chelsea's was one species that I've always considered. I always thought this was an interesting species with this pink tail. Hopefully at some point, I'll be able to find some more of these fish and really add to their numbers and get a really big school going. So I hope you enjoyed going around the barn today and taking a look at some of the new fish additions as well as some of the pretty cool spawning updates. I'm a little bit disappointed in the angelfish, but that comes with the territory when it comes to breeding fish. If you're interested in taking a look at all the fish here in the fish tank barn, I'll go ahead and put a tour here at the end so you can check all those out. So with that, stay safe, stay fishy, and I'll catch you on the next video.